Oh, oh. oh you're so good. <laughs> it was. She's going to take one. I know. I know. He was used to me. Take two. And when you point, I start, right? It kind of yes. gave me that. Okay. Welcome back to the For Your Best Self podcast. It's Dr. Novo, Dr. Sluja. It's been a while since we've sat down together in the studio. I always love chatting with you. I love spending time with you because I always feel like I learn something Likewise. and walk away a better human. So that's kind of the context of today's conversation of For Your Best Self, a conversation between us. We hope to share some things we've learned along the way that help us be our best selves. It is our practice motto. We want that for our patients. We want that for our staff. We want that for ourselves. We want that for the people that we care about. So today I hope we hope that you walk away with something that helps you be your best self a little bit more. So, nice segue. Um, also, we founded our practice on a book of philosophy, The Four Agreements, and that has kind of become my life compass. I feel like whenever I feel like I'm unsure or doubting myself or my decision, if you just circle back to that, I feel like it gives you great clarity and perspective. The four agreements, if you're not familiar, are always do your best, be impeccable with your word, don't make assumptions, and the last one is don't take things personally, which I think is the hardest one. That's the hardest one. And it takes daily practice Mm -hmm. and daily reminder. We have those posters in all our offices, and you can feel a difference, and patients can feel a difference when everyone is operating on that level. It's it's really palpable. It's a good reminder. So, and... It's just so cool that you chose that as part of our foundation. Yeah, I think there's so many, so many great examples too of of using those four. And it takes practice. I like I like the don't make assumptions for our our team so that when you know we're interacting with patients or with people in our lives, right? That we give the benefit of the doubt. Absolutely. And don't assume. Yeah, and I think it also helps build trust. Be curious. The opposite of that is be curious, ask questions. I love that word. I think you shared that word with me of um, when you're looking for answers or like a deeper layer in something, like I'm going to get curious about that or I'm being curious, meaning I'm coming from a place of wanting to understand versus um, asking questions when people think they're in trouble (laughs) right, (laughs) or have done something wrong. Um, so that has definitely helped a lot, and I, I use that in all aspects of life, right? trying to understand. Yeah, I think that's it, it helps when people give us feedback, right? It helps us not make assumptions or Absolutely. to be curious about where they're coming from. Absolutely. So. Um, or our kids, for that matter. Absolutely. <laughs> not to make assumptions about them or take things personally from them or to... Absolutely. Um, speaking of kids, I think one of the greatest pieces of advice I was ever given from a patient, shout out to Lauren Carpenter, this echoes in my brain on a daily basis is um, let go of guilt or never feel guilty for wanting to work or going to work. And one of my favorite questions when my kids, my kids are seven and three, so we have really unique perspectives because your kids are adulting. Yeah, College 23 grad. and 20 college grad and college sophomore so um, I love hearing what they're up to I feel like I've seen a little bit of them grown up and likewise mm-hmm, likewise you've, you've mm-hmm. known my kids before they were born so <laughs> um, it's fun to hear how y- how you're navigating and things like that and vice versa uh, but one of the greatest pieces of advice and shout out to stay-at-home moms mm-hmm. because they have the hardest job mm-hmm. on earth and we recognize that. I have a lot of friends that do, and kudos. I, I don't think I personally could at this stage. Yeah, yeah sometimes, sometimes when the kids were growing up, um, Mondays were just welcome. Yeah. Get to, get to work and have some sense of just more control. <laughs> you Absolutely. Know? I feel that. Um, so one of my favorite questions is, you know, why are you going to work? And I just love answering that with a smile. The, the kids an- yes. ask you? Like, why? And 
it's just so nice to teach them at a young age that I like what I do. I've had a lot of training. I enjoy my team. And they feel that to a sense mm-hmm. where my daughter begs to come to work. <laughs> yeah. She wants to come to the she office to to and see the team. And she was asked to have a birthday party there. So it's just so sweet that they recognize that we Maybe enjoy it. Maybe we should it. get into the birthday party yeah. business. <laughs> right? <laughs> now hosting. I spot it. <laughs> um, but I, I thought that was great advice of don't apologize, which I think we should do less of the less of in life in general. Right. Um, apologizing for what we think is a weakness or a flaw versus people having compassion and understanding. Right. But I work, you know, I love explaining to them why I'm going to work and I also look forward to coming home and playing with them. And then they're like, okay, bye. <laughs> 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 you know, they just, they don't question it beyond that. So I, I remember them asking and I've always taught them from a young age that, you know, we're, lar- we're part of a larger purpose mm-hmm. as one person and the goal is to contribute to mm-hmm. humanity in some way and mm-hmm. that can be raising your family and for uh, and, it, and it can be a combination of things and for me going to work was part of my contribution mm-hmm. for my for my life so it it and I told them to think about how they're going to contribute right. to Caring humanity and how are they caring for earth or how right. however you want to verbalize but something outside yeah. of yourself how are you leaving the world a better place yes yeah. so um so i think that was important for me to explain to them that um and i think i um i would have had a tendency to maybe over parent if mm-hmm. i was at home you know i know my own weaknesses um and so it gave me it gave them a ch- uh, more freedom than had Same. I been at home to yeah. explore and be the, their own selves. Right. So I needed that space with them. Right. I remember you saying so that, that I was less controlling. Gave them a great sense of independence yeah. because they were finding their way. I mean, while you're there to guide. Yeah. And Sometimes I wasn't there, just too exhausted. And, yeah. they, and so it, it, it worked. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that having self-confidence is one of the most important features we can kind of nurture in kids at, at a young age and that goes for you know having their own responsibilities and role and identity really beyond us so that's super cool um speaking of which um not to make it a parenting uh podcast but one of the things that is essential in life is really to be okay at not being good at everything mm-hmm being comfortable delegating you know while I admire the beautiful curated bento boxes for kids lunch it's like okay I I don't have time for that are my kids fed you know is it nutritious am I not pumping them full of sugar (laughs) you know mission accomplished so I think appreciating other people's skills and being comfortable and confident accepting help and delegating you know if it's a little bit of meal prep or you know, someone helping with the laundry here and there, it it can be Mm -hmm. life-changing. It can. Yeah, we, I mean, we have breakfast for breakfast and dinner sometimes, and that's okay. Yeah. And if they want, you know, as well as if you want variety, you're going to have to help make variety for dinner, or we do get help where we can Mm -hmm. get help, or we keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So um, grilling or pizza night or tacos or things that they can help with or that absolutely feel simple. instilling a love for the kids to help cook I mean <laughs> <laughs> early <laughs> no, so. I love. Um, one thing that uh, we kind of talked about is time for mindfulness and I think the hours in the day feel really short and uh, just kind of carving out five to ten minutes you know, where, you know, such as meditation or movement has really been life changing for me. You know, I was a college athlete, you know, the days of two to three hour gym sessions and, you know, that's, it's just not a reality. So it's like, oh, can I move 10 minutes after I eat or, you know, get 30 minutes with a walk with a friend or choosing social situations that maybe aren't on eating and drinking uh, but a little bit of movement or getting in nature, a beach walk. I know you tend to do that I'm, yeah, whenever you can. Get, 
more people to do that with me yeah. versus a dinner. Right. These are nice. Yeah. It's hot just right now, so I get a lot of passes, but yeah. <laughs> in the in the better weather. I just suggested a, a meetup with a friend I hadn't seen in a long time, and I offered lunch or brunch, and she's like, what about a walk? And I was just like, absolutely. That's the best. So grateful that you suggested that. So um, I think that's been really helpful in life is just getting really, um, you know, using time efficiently for the movement and mindfulness. One of the apps that we both use is Waking Up. Mm -hmm. um, I am relatively new to it, but I think it's been really life changing. It's an app by Sam Harris, who's a neuroscientist and philosopher, and he created an app where... I think the stigma of meditation is you have to have a room and an outfit and a set, you know just the whole 30 minutes to an hour but it's it's really coaching you to kind of move through life as a meditation mm -hmm. and I think that helps it's helped me with calm and clarity and just really taking a breath and taking the time to be kind of a little bit more focused mm -hmm. Um, I do that in my car whenever I can. Um, and you've also had some experience with the app. Yeah, I've had the app. I don't use it as often as I should. Mm -hmm. um, I f I, I'm working on making time for myself. That's, that's something yeah. that is a, a challenge. Um, so I'll take whatever is simple and, um, you know, Simple things for me. Um, I love to laugh at the end of the day because it keeps myself out of mm -hmm. my brain. It's hard to laugh and uh, think about mm -hmm. about tasks and chores at the same time. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I tend to use YouTube mm -hmm. a lot for that. And some of my favorite family type comedians. Um, I like Trey Kennedy. I like the Holderness family. If you've not seen mm -mm. their I'm uh, taking notes. YouTube, uh, really cute segment that everyone can relate to. Um, I like Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, Maniscalco, um, he has some great content, and you know they're short and they and it changes. It changes the mood. Um, sometimes I've gone through all of it, and then I'm like, okay, I, <laughs> I got to find another person. <laughs> uh, so I try to end my day that way. I like to end, start the day with one song, um, or if I'm feeling low energy, one song, because I think music can change everything. And Absolutely. again, you don't need a lot of time. Um, you can it's be doing mood. something else. It's a mood. So I will do that when I can. Um, I really, I, I can't, can't always make time for massage. Um, so I really like, and, and, you know, I'm, and we're with people so much of the day that sometimes Absolutely. I really crave some alone time the social batteries <laughs> yeah and it's not down. that not that i don't value relationships right. or want to spend time with others but um, sometimes my best relaxation is alone mm -hmm. and so i like um so i'll melt I, I don't know if people have heard of the melt method but it's fascial rolling mm -hmm. and you know five minutes of that feels almost like massage and it's something i can do quickly a um, Pilates teacher once told me that rolling is the fountain of youth for the body. Yeah, yeah. I was like, sold. <laughs> I believe it. I wish I could do more, <laughs> you know. I always think more of it. So, like, that's 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 just a great tool. Um, Absolutely. We keep a small rebounder at home because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things about being an adult is, is missing childlike play and activity yeah. is one of the things about being the in movement. business is just responsibility and just yeah. easy movement, right? Where you're not having to learn or listen to another yes. thing. And so rebounding has been something you could say and get on for a minute or two and jump and yes. feel feel better. It's great for lymphatic drainage as well. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, also after dinner dance parties. Yeah, Highly recommend. Dances, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Silly movement. You never feel so good. I mean, um, since w my kids won't have dance parties <laughs> with me, but um, <laughs> I will with the, you know, the dogs. <laughs> the dogs offer some movement and, and anything funny, you know, they pay attention to or anything Absolutely. silly. Absolutely. 
they pay attention to and that's been a really that's been a mindful place for me because it's it's hard to again think about things outside when the dogs are around very present Mm -hmm. so I was always not understanding of people who had animals because I didn't have animals growing up but one of my life's lessons is how uh, valuable they are in Mm -hmm. our lives and that it just a very centering and present yeah and happy connection thing about life and what's what is life and unconditional love and absolutely and rest you know when they rest it reminds me oh I should probably rest that's so true like I like your dogs I I'm recently more attuned to that like well if it's good for my kids it's probably good for me right if they're kind of being silly like I should be silly if they're moving around it's good for us too right like, let's not lose sight of that right right so you know so I think I think it's finding little yeah places um, you and I both love yoga yes and uh, I, I don't get to do it as same. often same you got to drive you got to make a class right. appointment a schedule and, um, and and you can do it on YouTube but I think with yoga it's something about the energy of yes. the place and and the intention right it's nice to not have electronics so I involved agree. in that. So recently I found Yoga Toes. I don't know anything about it. I brought it. Yoga Toes. Teach and, me. Um, so Yoga Toes are just something, you know, a lot of, when your feet are relaxed, you're more relaxed. Absolutely. So I've used Yoga Toes to like spread the toes uh-huh. out and just if I'm watching something or reading or doing charts and the toes are splayed out, it just, the feet feel so good and the rest of the body feel good. That's so smart. Um, and I've added that to like a little not like a, t- a tennis ball but um just a little smaller ball that's firm it's a the you roll on the bottom i roll on the bottom of the feet and loosen that fascia and that feels so good there's people that believe like that changes your face yeah it just well, I'll, well even more reason to do it <laughs> now i won't like, skip <laughs> yeah. now i won't skip in a good way like yeah it's some it, connection it's, there you know it's a nice way to release some stress that yeah that ball so the, the yoga, yoga toes. toes is positional because mm-hmm, we're in shoes all day yeah. and it's nice to have that spread and then I feel like I think just it's called yoga toes so I feel like I've done some yoga that's right so some of it half of it is the battle up here absolutely and I'm always looking to how do I kind of help help right. them you know I did something for myself I did some yoga toes absolutely. at the, the ball under the feet I listened to a good song you know, I laughed a little bit. That's pretty much a pretty full day that we yeah. can, you know, that I can be grateful for. Absolutely. I think it's just that mindset of staying positive. And um, you were mentioning you always kind of circled back to some advice a dear friend gave you on, you know, things we can control, things we can't control, and not getting more than we can handle. Yeah, I think, you know, we've been, we talk about how relationships matter at work with our staff, with our mm-hmm. patients, also at home. Um, and and one of um, one of the ladies that was close to me in my life um, before uh, she passed would always say when I when I when I was a new mom and trying to figure things out or a new doctor and new to Melbourne, um, I would go have a cup of tea with her and she would say God or the universe um, won't give you more than you can handle, mm-hmm. and so there are there are days where it gets close, and mm-hmm. I just remember mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm not going to get more than I can handle, so I can handle this, and and part of life is learning resilience and Absolutely. getting down and picking yourself back up, mm-hmm. um, and so I think you know we've hesitated from having a lot of telling people how to lead their lives, where I tend to focus a lot on at work on my injections and and sometimes people don't get to know me and mm-hmm. um and so but a lot of it is is we do have ups and downs and our job when we're at work is to take care of others mm-hmm. um and then our job outside is ma- is to take care of ourselves Absolutely. and our families and our friends and so some of that is is telling yourself to get back up and yeah. and that you can handle this you yeah. can handle this Absolutely. So that's translated. You can handle this. What What do you sort of use for yourself on those difficult days? Um, 
I think it's just that conditioned grit and s- trying to peel back what's the silver lining or what's the lesson, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What this may seem really challenging or it may seem like a door is closing, but, you know, just shifting that mindset to a door closing is really another oppor- opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think that not not everything's not always rainbows and butterflies, but getting comfortable with feedback, getting comfortable with growth, um, and just really looking f- what's the lesson or opportunity, really. Right. Is kind of what I've gained in the most in the past seven to eight years of being in practice and yeah, uh, yeah, it's life. It's life, right? Yeah. It's just it's kind of it's an in, it's an interesting journey and mm-hmm. um and I think you know I think it is being easy. Yeah, I, I've had to learn that being easier on myself for certain things and what's important, like you were saying, peeling back what's important. And yeah, and it can't be. I think too, one thing I've gained over the years is, um, you know, we always say, you know, schedule three to four months. We're always recommending Mm -hmm. to schedule out and life gets so busy. So I think that we're, you know, programmed to put ourselves last in life as we're caretakers. So so I think just putting the same expectation on myself as I would expect out of a patient is okay, I'm going to put myself on the schedule yeah. or I'm going to, it's really hard to be spontaneous in medicine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. So it's just like, okay, well, I'm going to be spontaneous in a very planned way and just like, I want to do this thing in six months because it might feel a little bit exciting and spontaneous now or like putting it where I can or that treatment, you know. Getting it on the calendar. Yeah, getting it on the calendar, you know, whether it's a facial with one of our yeah, estheticians. Yeah, using the calendar for your... Booking yourself out, just like we would ask a patient to or recommend that a patient does, because Cause all before you know it, a, yeah, yeah, it's there. That's so a really good. I'm getting really better about tip that. About just putting yourself on yep. the calendar. Yep. Yeah, because you make time for what's on the calendar. Exactly. Yep. You're yeah. You're more less likely to skip it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Three years later, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But it's true. I think that's a lot to cover, and I think if you if you guys out there gain one pearl or one um, thing that can enhance your life, I think that's that's kind of all we could ask for. I don't yeah. know. Anything else on your list that you want to cover? I think that we, we've talked offline about the beauty of social media for our profession and also yeah. the the difficulty of this is social a big media one. for our for both line. adults, for women, especially yeah. because um, I was just, you know, reading a little bit about how men are on the internet, but less on social media. Women tend to use social media more because it's like connection and mm-hmm. relationships, and we we gravitate towards that. Um, but I think there's a, there's a balance, and I find my own self looking at balance. And so one of one of the things I really like to do to balance is read. And Absolutely. read a real book, not, you know, read a real book or listen. So something's in, something's on my hands and Something teaching the tangible. kids to read and have yeah. books from really a young age and going to bookstores yes. and um, just to balance all of the electronic learning yeah. we do and the electronic things we, you know, use, we have to do, right, to function, um, uh, kids included. But um, I think you know, have a book you're reading that Absolutely. is unrelated to work and use that as a little self care or peaceful time or time to time to I agree. Heal. Um one of the recent ones I really I read and really liked was called Midnight Library. Oh cool. And so I don't know if anyone's read that, but it was a really it was a good lesson, good story, easy read, fiction. I recently read um the book about oh my gosh I'm gonna blank on the name a land remembered and it's oh. like a historical fiction about Florida and I it just it's yeah. amazing it's like totally it takes you to a different and uh, I've never felt more in myself when I like like you said even if it's 10 15 minutes it's like a, a night totally transporting yeah it's a mini escape or mini yeah. vacation in a book uh, yeah, yeah so you know I think that's that's a 
that's a thing that's been important. Absolutely. In Lifelong. The life. And, you know, with adult kids, it's, it's hard to come up with things to do sometimes. And so travel has been helpful. And, um, you know, but, but when we're talking on the phone, sometimes there's not a lot to say or do. Or mm-hmm. so sometimes we've been, we've been going to saying that child, like a little bit of gameplay and, I've, I've been grateful just for the New York Times Wordle and connections and, Fun. you know, everyone, we all talk about it and can make it something that was was a game and how many did you get it in and did you get this one today? And, um, and so it's just a fun way to interact. Absolutely. And you've always been uh, encouraging on the kind of the conversation starters or like the dinner table, the cards and things just as questions or conversation starters I think that's nice I think there's nothing more depressing this day and age and going out and seeing people just plugged in at a table together you know kids on their iPads and adults on their phones and I'm like always observing and it's like the only time they'll interact is when they're like showing something on their phone and it's we're really losing touch on how to make eye contact and how to communicate yeah in a really meaningful way and it Socially. doesn't right it fe- it feels it can feel like oh i spent all this time work but it but not feel fulfilling connection wise at the end right. of it when so i it, and then also when you're having conversations with adult kids i feel like sometimes um I, again i will try to offer advice and i don't mm. i want to control myself a little bit mm-hmm. or not ask too much about ask a little bit about work but not mm-hmm. ask too much and 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 it's nice to have games or mm-hmm you know some common things that feel lighter to Absolutely. talk about so um yeah i love yeah. that we play we're playing a lot of games a lot of guess who at home oh yeah you're at that <laughs> that age dance parties guess who those uh, we don't tag. Guess who. tag i highly recommend game. tag it is so hard it's tag like r- i'm running after dying her? yes oh tag. that's a good one it's like scary get your adrenaline going do they do fort we used to do those yeah. forts that yeah. was always so many forts yeah to fort my, was always to my fun. disdain but <laughs> just, i highly recommend playing forts tag again <laughs> so much cardio i'm like i'm dying <laughs> that's a good one yeah but yeah good that's good anything else you want to share no i think I perfect we'll share again in soon. yeah part two all right. Thank you for listening in. Um, stay tuned for more episodes. You can check us out on Instagram, Dr. Swidge underscore Dr. Novo, or our website, foryourbestself.com. Thank you for listening. Thanks. <laughs>